good evening this guys oh. good evening guys this is your host juice and this is the squeeze podcast um today we're just going to get into uh, little introductions i'm again i'm your host juice um new to the whole scene as you can see it's a little choppy but i'm getting with it oh my god um definitely technical difficulties for sure uh again first stream um but today we're going to get into the topic of why the red pill space is so big and why i believe that it's you know gaining so much prevalence and why you know you may be feeling that it's important um so you know if you don't know about the red pill space uh you know it kind of connotates to uh like uh you know the now popular fresh and fit uh, just pearly things, the ever immortal Kevin Samuels. Um, and it's just the intersection of gender dynamics and how we, you know, relate to one another in this world today now with all the media and things of that nature. So, um, if you just give me a moment, we're going to try to get into it. So the Red Peel community as a whole is a loosely defined group of, you know, often men who uh, set their principles um, and are related to personal development, self-improvement, and the social, social and sexual dynamics of the community as a whole. Uh, while there's a lot of criticism that, you know, is thrown that way. Um, I just believe that this community has been not given the proper respects due um, as their competitors, the feminists, have been. And I just find that it's amazing that even when put into a debate that they will, you know, instead of trying to hear exactly what these men and or red-peeled women have to say, um, instead, they are met with, you know, name calling and honestly what I would call childlike behavior. But then they would, you know, back that information up with, you know, falsified information and feelings. And we'll get into that, you know, kind of later. Um, but, you know, we're just going to go on a list of things that, you know, the community in the red pill space, you know, kind of stands for, um, and why I think that those things are kind of important. So if we go into point number one, uh, alternative perspectives, um, the red pill community often, uh, delivers things in a different perspective on personal development. Um, so how you can better yourself as a person, meaning physically, how to better your speech and uh, talk conversation style, um, how to be more socially acceptable as a whole um, is pretty much what, you know, most of the Red Pill community tries to promote and, you know, give to you. Um, and it's kind of, uh, you know, depending on who you listen to, if you're a friend, fit, fresh, uh, fit and fresh kind of guys, or, um, you know, even, you know, uh, I don't know if I'll get blacklisted for saying I'm I'm a YouTuber, but even an Andrew Tate guy, you can understand that, you know, getting your physical right is a large proponent in helping yourself to do better. And in this uh, YouTube page, we'll also be talking about, you know, stoicism and things about that, because I also believe that personal development and getting the best of yourself will get you to the best possible outcome that you can possibly receive. And, um, and from my personal perspective, because I come from a mental health background, I know that it will give you the umph and the positive inner glow that you will need to strive every day and in every way to make your life better and to make yourself better than you were the day before. Um, The other topics that they get into are, um, you know, of course, the social climate of today and how the community as a whole looks at men and masculinity, which I will just be very abrupt about. There is a full on attack on masculinity. Every turn that you take, there is a term saying men ain't shit or men ain't 
enough. They don't bring the bare minimum. They aren't, you know, one thing or another they're lacking. And I honestly think that the prevalence to that is to the detriment of our all our overall community because these men need to be empowered just as well as the women. And without the empowerment of our men, then we will have a very, very weak infrastructure. And with this weak infrastructure or a weak foundation, then just like the three little pigs, somebody will be able to come and blow our fucking house down. And we don't need that because we are in a world where everybody is willing and ready to pounce on you like an animal. And we can't have that as a societal as a societal whole and think that nobody will be waiting to attack. So with that in mind, people, please be mindful that if you want strong men in this community, you have to help and support to build those strong men. And of course, by watching this YouTube, you will learn ways to help and support the men in your life, the man of your life, or the sons and or young nieces, I mean, nephews that you may be raising. And I will not only be trying to help the men, I will be helping women in general as well. And I can say with 100% honesty that I have love for all the genders. Now, just let that set in. I do have love for everyone. And that does not take away from the information that I will be handing out here on this channel. So I hope that you can all receive what I have to say with just a grain of salt, because anybody's information be to be taken with a grain of salt. And then you should take your time to contest what is being said, because you should not follow anyone's narrative without questioning. And that includes me. That includes anybody you feel is great. That especially includes the mainstream media and the government. Now, I have said it, and I won't be repeating it too often because who knows what could happen to me. I am just a small-time man, but I do have things that you will come to need to know. So with that being said, let's get on to the third point of number one. <laughs> um, and it goes into other gender-related and relationship issues that, you know, aren't represented in mainstream media, which, you know, are the things that I feel like Oh, and I said the dreaded word I feel like. So we're going to take that back. And the other things in mainstream media that are unaddressed, like, and for example, the fact that relationships don't work how Disney has made them to come out to be. And we have fully believed that the Disney narrative is the way to having a family because every time you look and ask somebody if they're with somebody, no. I'll go find someone else. The narrative or the way that we think, the perspective or whatever words you wish to choose, no matter which level of thought that you come from, you have to know after a certain time, it's all bullshit. And if you can't relate to that, then you are still living in the delusion that you can find anybody. And we all know that it takes a little bit more than going out and just finding somebody because love is a struggle. And to really be dedicated, you have to commit to change because you will change. Life will change. The person you love will change. And you will have to change with that to make things actually perfect because practice makes perfect. And everything that you do in practice to your commitments will make you a better person. But if you do nothing and you come as the table and expect someone to just accept that, man or woman, you're a fucking asshole. Period. So I will go on to my point number two. There is a new type of support and community for these people in the red pill space. So the people who are misrepresented and the people who aren't being asked or things that allow them to feel identified, they are there finding familiarity, finding a group, and why not a group that wants them to do better for themselves, that wants them to work on themselves and make themselves a better person, man or woman. But if they're just talking to the men and they want them to get better with their health, with their physical appearance, 
and to overall make more money so that they can take care of the women they, they so choose to find? Why would that be a problem? Why would you not want that in a society? Why wouldn't you not want more highly driven, more highly motivated people? You really have to sit down and think, why wouldn't they want that? Why wouldn't you want that? Why would you want somebody who would just follow a narrative that you probably wouldn't even want to follow? Because again, like I said, the whole Disney narrative we already know doesn't make people happy. And if you think that you got some new age magic that you're going to razzle medazzle or sprinkle some fucking salt bay and make something happen that doesn't really happen on a regular basis, you really have to sit down and think, who are you? Are you somebody who can make anything happen? And if that's the type of person you are, what type of things have you lost in pursuit of making anything happen? Because there are certain things that you had to trade in pursuit of said happiness. So with anything that's good, you have to take some bad. And it's really the decisions that we are making now today that will be in the detriment to our futures. And what that really means is the decisions we make today when we are young and or happy will echo into our futures. And if we're living a fast money, fast gratification lifestyle, then of course the returns will be fastly taken the fuck away from you. Because things that come fast go even faster. And the things that you take time to build last even longer. So would you rather take your time and build a lasting connection now so that it can echo into a future that you want for forever? Or would you get that instant gratification and keep having to do that until the day you damn die? Because you're going to have to do some type of work. And if it's not work in a long-term situation with somebody you find you can love, then it's going to be quickly doing that over and over again for the rest of your life. And you know, and I know that anything like that is fucking draining. And I know that whatever streaming service I'm on will probably not like my language. But again, I'm an early YouTuber, early streamer. So I hope that you love me regardless, because I'm going to be a voice that may cuss. Um, And back to the point, though. On top of that, would you not want those people who are now striving towards being better to have a community that uplifts them and holds them to those facts and makes them a better person so that they weren't as toxic as you think that they are? Because a lot of people try to conflate this notion that self-betterment for a man or, in, again, because the Red Pew community is definitely catered towards more so men and the interactions that they have with men. So if there's better men coming out of this place and, and all of these things that are happening for the men, why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't you want them to have a community that will back them and make them a better man? Because when they come back from that, then you can be proud of the man that you're dealing with. Why wouldn't you want to be proud of that? Why would you want to keep these quote unquote simps, betas so empowered in the in in the world now? Because those aren't the men that you like. Those aren't the men that you even respect. Those aren't the men that you're trying to deal with. And I'm talking to the ladies and even the men who are into men. Because most men who are into men would even probably tell you, I'm I'm not of that community. Uh, you know, but we are of all respects here on this channel. Um that it's it's just that masculine traits are necessary. Um, any in any gender dynamic, there are certain roles that somebody will play. And if we try to segue and say that, oh well, they don't have to do this or don't have to do that, I would tell you this: you will be a lot more comfortable in yourself when you know who you are as a person, and you identify that and move towards that. Because as we all know. The person who doesn't stand for anything will fall for anything. So let me reword that because I definitely said it wrong. The person who doesn't stand for, who stands for nothing will fall for anything. And that just pretty much means if you don't have anything to stand upon, the wind will topple you over just like that house with no foundation. 
So let's just, you know, make it really real and understand where each community is coming from. Because even with a debate, you have to understand what the other side is coming from. And more times than I have seen than not, the red pill space, this is just me and my own particular opinion, because there are a plethora of conversations I'm not privy to, but I want to say that the red spill pay, the red pill space is a lot more prevalent in the conversation of debating the feminist space or their detractors, meaning the people who are against them. So they will debate them and come out with the information that is very factual and not speak upon feelings because we cannot make an exception for, you cannot make an exception for the small, minute, like the small group of people when we look at the large whole and the fact that as a large whole, our communities, we are losing families at a rapid rate. And I'll even segue into another point really fast that it has nothing to do with the topic. And I just want to make it apparent that before, families would take care of each other full cycle. And what I mean by that is from birth, you had a mother and a father. Most times, if the father wasn't around, he was working, but he made sure he came home and put bread on that table, right? Your mother, even if she wasn't working or you depending on the time frame we're talking about, because, you know, people will try to change what I'm trying to say. But depending on the time frame that we're talking about, your mother may or may not have been working. And in the time that she was working, she made sure that you had all the clothes and made sure that you were nurtured and had the food that you needed to go to school. And then you had your grandparents and they, if your parents were smart and did things the way that they were taught to them when they were young, they got married at such an early age that by the time that you were old, you spent your life knowing your grandparents, knowing all the ins and outs of how they worked. And by the time that they got old enough, you were out of the house. And you know what that means? It gave mommy and daddy a little leeway in between time to live their lives just a bit. So that when your grandparents got old enough, they could take them in and take care of them because those were the people that took care of them when they were children. And now we need our parents to take care of their parents because if we don't see that, guess what? We're going to send them to those old folks home where Guess what? Just like the scary things that we're all so afraid of, abuse is prevalent and it's on the rise. Neglect is prevalent and on the rise. And you want to send your family there? You want to send them for the... They spent their entire lives making sure that you had the best that you could have making sure that you had food on the table, clothes on your back, made sure that you lived a life as positive as they could give you, and you put them in a place where they were more at risk than if they came home with you, and you maybe, maybe had a hired nurse that would come and look over them when you weren't able to, I think it's absurd. I think it's absolutely crazy that we do not even try to see our people when they're at the end because it's too much. It's too much? It was too much to change your fucking dirty ass diapers. It was too much to have diarrhea and piss on your face when you were an infant. But nobody takes that into account because now that that's over, you're worried about you and your two and a half kids and the fact that you waited until you're 35 and that the fact that your parents told you you should wait. And then now you're they're probably one toe into the grave because I won't say that everybody's parent is old enough to have one whole foot in the grave because I don't know everybody's situation, but just old enough. For you to not even consider that now they're going to be in the point of their lives where a lot more things will be prevalent like disease and mis, mis, uh, mistreatments and things of the point of the matter is they are getting older and more likely to die. And it's sad to say, but you have to be a parent to that because if you're out gallivanting or trying to make it how you live because you're on your 
third life, aka you've tried again and again and again, and you're now trying to make it your third time, and you forget that you have family that you need to be a parent to, and you let them die in the shadows of the success that you aren't even making, is fucking sick. You really need to sit down and consider what is important in this world. And honestly, the people that bring you into this world should hold a lot of weight to you. The people that have nurtured you for years of your life, even if they aren't your parents, or they're the people that just showed you the way and let you know what the world really had to offer, if they are just the people that made life really apparent to you. You need to really think about what it is that you are going to offer them when it's their end of days. And not no bullshit as, oh, well, I tried because I put you in a home and hope that you had the best care because this place sounded like the best place. Let's get real. We know it's not. So back to the main point. Because the number three thing on my topics for this whole red spill space and why I think it's important is that there is a strong emphasis on self self improvement and i myself am a testament to that and if you watch this channel you will learn more but i turned myself from a big boy to a very fit young man and i am on a journey to get even fitter and i will be helping anybody and i mean anyone man woman and anything in between i will be helping you on a journey from here on out to better yourself and that means both physically mentally and financially so watch this channel intently because we will help you to become overallly better. And if we can't, then you're just not watching the right thing because my answers might not be the right answers for you. And I hope that you find a place that will empower you, that will bring you to the answers that you are looking for. But I just want you to know that we will be doing it here in the most proper and peaceful, but at the same time, the most prevalent way for you to gain the maximum results to get the best lifestyle that you can here in in your dynamic and as me as a man who identifies as a man i will definitely be catering to my brothers who are men and making sure that we do have a space and i do not particularly identify as red pill i do identify with the characteristics that they do perceive so again, let me get back to the main story, because we do have a large emphasis on self-improvement. So I want everybody to take about it, think about how to make their self better daily, because it's an everyday thing. It's an upward battle. You will have to work, 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 as Rihanna said, to make sure that you are on the best of the best of the few in the trained. Because we all take time to master our craft. And if you take no time and no effort in mastering your crafts, you will be a master of none. Simple as that. And now we'll segue into our fourth point. The red spill, the, huh, I am tongue twisted to the max. I'm going to need some water. But the red pill space they really address the taboos that mainstream media is unable to and is very much unwilling to because they have to follow a agenda. And I'll just say it like that. There are things that they will not tell you because they aren't able to. And it's not because they don't want to and that they don't know it. It's because if they do, they will be, for lack of the better word, canceled. Just like a lot of other people who do hand you the truth in a free platform like YouTube, like I might be. Um, and it's funny to me because if you really think about it, they've said it a long time and as hard as possible. And if you really have been listening, the revolution will never be televised. And if you do catch it televised, you better catch it quick and make sure you take notes. So when you're watching this show, make sure you watch intently and take notes. And, you know, just so that I'm getting into the swing of things, it might be my first video. But if you're liking what I have to say, please like that. Hit that like button, because guess what? YouTube 
award you guys for liking this video with fireworks. So like the video, comment, and please, please subscribe because I'm just trying to start. Well, I'm not trying. I'm starting this thing out and I will be coming to you strong. I'm working out a schedule already because the information I have to you, I know is invaluable and everybody will need it. Not just one gender, not just one person or the other. There will be a large basis of you that will come here and need what I'm going to be giving out. And I will be giving it out as free as I can for as long as I can with the hopes that as many people can really understand that the message is right in your face and you just have to listen. Don't look outside. Look right here. Okay, and then the last point for the video, I know I've been a little long winded and it's only five points. Um, the red, the red pill space is very much an empowerment to those who are now disenfranchised and those disenfranchised people are men who want to be a man who are strong in their masculinities and now have to live in a community where that that masculinity is attacked. It's attacked on on a multitude of fronts. It's attacked on social media, which is supposed to be a safe space for most people because a lot of people, you know, navigate that space in anonymity or anonymously because a lot of people don't know what anonymity is. Um, and I'm not, it's not as an attack. Um, it's just so that everybody can understand. Um, and at the same time, I need to, you know, I will be working on my verbal slurs that we need to just understand that like we all try to say, like, if you listen to any other space that they want to have equality. So you have to be able to hear what these men have to say, because it's not like they're saying things that aren't important. And if you're unwilling to hear what they have to say, or if you're triggered, then you really have to sit down and think to yourself, why are you allowing yourself to be triggered when they're trying to uplift a community that's obviously feeling that they're not? And if that feeling is then backed up with facts, you have to listen to the factual evidence because then it's like arguing that people are dying and they're not, but you visibly see bodies on the ground and just say that, no, these are cadavers or new robots. Regardless, there's bodies on the ground. It should be concerned. We shouldn't be desensitized to bodies on the ground. Because that's kind of what it equates to. And, oh, my God, let me please keep watching this channel because I'm going to do a review on something I thought was absolutely outrageous. Now, I don't know if you guys are watching this and even have any concern because, again, this is my first video. But um, a, a red pill woman, I would say. Um, that I'm, I'm, I'll even be very honest because, you know, you know, I have no personal takes to this person and, you know, big ups to the girl. Um, but I am a fan of just pearly things. Um, and not to say that, you know, go lot her and like her, or uh, am I saying that, you know, I want to pull from her community or anything like that. Um, but I love when she went on this panel for vice and she went up against other women. And I thought it was amazing because she asked questions that these women weren't even ready to answer. But one thing that this was very prevalent, that there was this one woman there, and I will say woman because they had people on the panel that weren't all women. And no jabs to anybody, but it's very strange to me because I come from a place where, you know, there was a separation to understand that Everybody has their place. And I'm not a fan of segregation because, as you can see, I am a man of color. But there are boundaries and there are places where, you know, there's there's a reason why there were country clubs and places where people segregated and congregated their selves. Uh, not to say segregated. Again, you can scratch that. Take it how you feel. Um, it's not to target anything. But it were spaces where... Some people may say safe spaces for certain communities, um, but it just allowed them to voice their concerns. And now we are trying to break down those walls, but then allow other communities to have these safe spaces without questioning why is that okay? 
And I think that we should. And I don't think that it's just a thought. Because why is it okay for other people to be empowered and to gain access to things and then take away those same accesses from other people? It is like honestly peacocking to a whole nother level. It's honeypotting. It's all the type of coercion. Yes, you guys got to excuse me. I'm definitely going to need some water. But it's all the type of coercion and collusion and things of that nature to trick people out of understanding that we really need to honor each other. We say we want to honor each other, but it's not it's not apparent, you know? And they say that, you know, a lot of these men are lacking, but we also see that the disparity is in the fact that there is an attack on men. And as I said in the beginning, we have to be apparent to that. You know, you're supposed to check on both your strong and your weak people. You need to check on your strongest people because they're going to hide when they're weak. So if you're, you know, thinking that there's all these strong men out there, no, they're just hiding that they hurt. And it's not up to, you know, they can't stay the person that they really deep down are if you want them to be this soft person because that's also against their narrative. That's against their character. That's against their archetype. That's against who they are as a person. But we tell them that, no, you got to be expressive. But if you're not expressive, if you express yourself in different manners, but nobody wants to receive that. Everything is conjoined into this. You got to do it this way. But I think it's funny because we all know that, you know, uniqueness is what makes a person great. So why would you want everybody to be the same? Why would you want everybody to be on the exact same page because in a world full of gray it would be boring as shit and shoot i might bring this topic back up because that relates to something i even saw as a child and those of you in my age group that might be able to relate you watch that timmy turner or fairly odd parents because timmy turner was the real name of that show i don't give a damn what anybody says timmy turner was the main character they said timmy 80% 80% of the time on that damn show, Timmy Turner. Okay, so on the Timmy Turner show, there was an episode where somebody, I'm not sure if it was Timmy or not. I'm going to have to definitely, I'll redo that episode and and make it very extensive. Um, but somebody wished for the world to be the same. And guess what? It was gray and everyone was a blob. So to round this all up, Everything was the same. Everybody was the same. Everything was the same color. The only thing that was different was a mistake that happened to be pink. And the only reason Timmy, who was the, I don't know if he was the one that made the wish again, but he was the only one that could even realize that color was the actual thing that they needed in their world. Color. Because instead of having everything the same, you have to understand and respect people's individual traits. Just like we have to understand that certain groups have their traits and we need to respect them and that their wants and needs are valid, just like your wants and needs are valid. And I'm talking to anybody that may be on the opposite spectrum of the community that in which I am speaking of right now. Because it is already hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to get this money for the rent. No, let me stop being funny. Um, But it's really hard out here to be yourself in general when everybody has a narrative that you want to live. And to really be great, everybody, this is a secret that, you know, if you actually watch the entirety of this episode, I'm giving you a jewel that most people won't. To truly be great, it is right side out it is right outside of the normalcy. It is right outside of everyone else's mindset of how they think you should be doing everything. Because guess what? 
they only think about things the way they think about things because they want a normal life. So if you really want to be great, you have to get outside of what everybody else in this normal thing is talking about. You cannot even look at TV and expect the results in your life to be even similar because you have to understand all the things that they cut out that would even be appropriate to establish the life that these people will be living in the TV shows. There is no way that you can equate two phone conversations to a fucking marriage because that's how TVs try to make it make it out to be. And that's what a lot of these spaces, these spaces are trying to make apparent to you because they are prevalent things on TV like Love is Blind. I actually like it. I watched that show. But it's a joke. It's a parody to what love is in this world. They have Love Island. These are all Netflix shows I will be mentioning too. So if you have a Netflix account, these are places or things you can watch if you're bored and have time. But you should not be watching things because if you're really listening to what I'm saying to you on this channel, you should be getting up and being motivated to do something better with yourself. But back to what I'm saying. They even have things like, um, what's the one with the robot? Too Hot to Handle. And on Too Hot to Handle, they play on the fact that you have to build a genuine connection without sex. But you know that they they are making this increasingly disparative because they make it seem as though everybody's horny as hell. But we all know that they're both not horny as hell. And they definitely separated in men and women. So to understand that they're both not horny as hell because the men will be ready to drop them draws the very first 10 minutes. But a lot of those women are not ready to do all that. So nobody on the season has fucked on the first day. And I and let me just say, oh, excuse me, because I know that. I don't know if I'll be age restricted, but nobody has slept with each other on the first day on that show. But it, it's highly apparent that obviously there's some scripting involved because I'm pretty sure within the number of seasons that they had, somebody would have slipped up on that account. Because you might not even think that, you know, looking at this show that I am a high class or high value top tier top G. But damn sure do I know that one night stands ain't that easy. I mean, ain't that hard to make happen, especially when you're both feeling it. And it don't take but a twinkle in the eye and a head nod. And it's as simple as that. So I want to close this out and just to let you guys understand with all these points, the, the alternative perspective, the supporting community, the self-improvement, the addressing topics that ain't nobody else going to say shit about. So speaking on those taboos that you just feel are a little uncomfortable and tapping those spaces that need to be looked up under. Because it's like just like looking up under that rug. You might have kicked up some shit up under there, but you still got to hit it with the vacuum or sweep up under there. So make sure you look up under all those dirty crevices and get shit really clean. Because you can't clean up your life when you have a corner dirty. And that's for real. Because there's always going to be some grind. And the last point, the empowerment. But guys, if you really like what I had to say, I know this is probably a little long video, especially for somebody who's brand new. Uh, I'll even try to break it up into clips um, so that that way you can see some stuff. Um, but thank you for tuning in. Again, this is your boy Juice, new to the streaming game, guys. So hopefully you're liking me, you're loving me. So hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And this is the Squeeze Pod. Peace.